Hello there, we're back together and you're gonna love this. Now, I'm betting that you really like paradigms. I remember when I first discovered that, I thought I, thought I was the only one that knew it. It's such a neat idea. Now we understand why we're not doing what we already know how to do. Now let me ask you something really important. Are you, or uh, maybe a loved one, a family member, somebody that you're very close with, leaving your dreams on the table, insofar as your money is concerned, or maybe the travel you'd like to do, or relationships that you want to develop, or the health that you really, really, truly want to enjoy, or maybe even your love affair. You're missing it. The dream has escaped you. How would you like to know a formula that's as exact, it's, it's, it's exact as mathematics on how to get what you want? See, most people are really extras in their own movie. They look at somebody else and they think, wow, if only I could do that. Well, let me let you in on a secret. You can do that if that's what you want to do. I'm betting that is probably not what you want to do. That's what they want to do. And you know something? If they're doing what they want, you can do what you want, and I can do what I want. See, we're all working with the same mental faculties. We're all working with the same power, and we're all working with the same laws. So it's a matter of understanding how to set and how to achieve goals. Have you ever been really ready to do something and you were scared stiff and so you backed away and left it back on the table? I know I've been like that. I know a lot of people are like that. Well, if you've done that in the past or a loved one, you can share this with them. And I would suggest that you do invite some friends in and share this with them and then sit around as a group and, and openly and very transparently discuss these hangups that we've got because we've all got them. You're not the only one with them. Now let's stop and think about goals. You know, Thoreau was, um, he was quite a guy. He said, if a person will advance confidently in the direction of their dream and just endeavor, in other words, you only have to give it your best shot, endeavor to live the life that you've imagined. Do you know what's going to happen? He said, you'll meet with success unexpected in common hours. You'll be on your way downtown to do some shopping and you'll think, I did it. I actually did it. I reached the goal. Do you know the beautiful part about working with goal setting and goal achieving with the right rules by law, that's exactly what happens. You reach the goal and you're, you're, you're motoring at such a speed and having so much fun, you get past it before you realize you've already done it. You're probably off to the next one. Do you know what it is? It's a habitual way to live a creative life that's fulfilling that really leaves you inside like you've got something. Now, I refer to uh, the system that we use in the Proctor Gallagher Institute. I refer to it as the ABC of goals. Now, you'd say, well, this looks pretty elementary. Well, I'm going to let you know a secret. It is very elementary. It's just that most people never really learn it. Now, I'm going to talk about the A level of goals as doing things you already know how to do. I had a young guy come up to me one time in a seminar and he asked me if I'd talk to him about his goal. And I said, sure, what's your goal? He said, I want to get a new car. I said, okay, what kind of a car do you want? He said, I want a new Pontiac. I said, I see. I said, what are you driving now? He said, a Pontiac. Now, you know, some little guard stuff to jump up in my mind. And I said, um, how old is your car? And he says, it's four years old. Well, I said, it's probably time you got another car anyway. You know, I said, how long have you had it? And he said, four years. So I said, now, let me get this straight. You have known for four years how to get a new car. Yeah. Well, I said, then that wouldn't constitute a goal. Now, that doesn't mean you don't get a new car and you don't get a new potty. I can get a Cadillac if you want. You can get a Maserati if that's what you really want. And you should get a car but you've known for four years how to get a car. You see, the beautiful part about goals and understanding it is goals are not to get. Goals is not, you don't set goals for acquisition. 
You set goals to grow. You set goals to reach inside and stretch and go where you've never been. You set goals to take you to a place you've never gone before. And you grow as a human being and you know something, you never go back. So A-type goals, mm, forget it. Now let me let you in on a little secret, I'll caution you. Probably all the people you mix with deal with A-type goals. Now why do I say that? Because we are attracted to people that are on the same frequency as us, that are in harmony with us. We talk about the same things, we like about the same things. So when you go for that new goal that's beyond the A-type goal, um, they're not gonna support you. It's not that they don't love you, it's not that they don't want you to win, they don't want you to leave. That's right. They don't want you to leave, and you're gonna leave, you're gonna raise your consciousness, and you're just automatically going to attract a whole new world into your life. So where do we go if we don't do A-type goals? Well, you go to a B-type goal. Now, the people that, many of the people that really think they're shooters, you know, they're really making it happen, they're going after B-type goals, and this really doesn't cut it. It really doesn't cut it. You know how I said in, in paradigms, you got all this knowledge, but you're not using it? Well. That's true in the B-type goals too. See, the person that's after the B-type goal, they, um, they pay attention to what's going on in their life. They know how much money they've got in the bank, they know how much is coming in, and um, they're pretty accurate when they survey their world, I'm talking about their material world and, uh, and their social world, of you know him and her and it and them, the people that they could go for, to for support. And they've gotta have a plan, the plan has to be right on the money. Now, they think if this happened, and if that happened, and if she did this, and he did that, and if that money come in like I want it to come in, if all these things happened, then I could do that. And so reluctantly, we say, that's the goal. And you'd say, well, is that really the right goal? No. Why not? Well, because you see, you already see how it's gonna happen. So in that respect, it's much like an A-type goal. You gotta stretch a little bit, but you know if everything falls in place. Now I'm gonna tell you something else. There's no inspiration in a B-type goal, and you're gonna to have to be inspired. But you don't in get inspired going after a, a B-type goal, and your old buddies, you know, the A-type people that you're always with, they're not gonna support you because they don't want you to leave. So we got no support, and um, we've got no inspiration. Now what's the next? The next is a C-type goal. See, the C-type goal, that's what I really want. You know when you sit in your daydream, you may have a couple of drinks in your mind, whoo, you know, and you're off on a trip somewhere, if only we could do that, if only we could do, and you're fantasizing. But you see, there's a problem with fantasizing. You have been told you don't fantasize. That's not being realistic. It's totally illogical to think that you can do that. Well, that's pretty interesting, you know. It really is pretty interesting. Because if you go back and you study in history and you take a look at the people that have really made their mark, they've been ordinary Johns and Marys who have done something that changed the entire world. Now you'll often hear people say, well, one person can't change the world. I'm gonna tell you something. One person changed my world, and I'll lay you odds, you get locked into this and you share it, and they're gonna say you've changed their world. See, we've gotta be able to get beyond that barrier of logic. We've gotta break through that paradigm. You know that line that separates us from what we want? It's a paradigm, that's all it is. Do you think the Wright brothers were being logical? Do you think they were being realistic? They weren't scientists. They weren't aeronautical engineers. They were bicycle mechanics in Dayton, Ohio. But they were going to fly. Now, even their daddy was a, was a bishop in a church. He told them they were going to burn in hell for even suggesting that they could fly. But you know, and I know, they introduced us to the kingdom of flight. And it wasn't that many years until we were on the moon. Now think, they crashed right through the logic barrier. 
They went right through it. They didn't let it stop them. Now, you may say, but they're different than me. Well, they probably are. They didn't leave their dreams on the table, and you may be leaving your dreams on the table. Get them off the table. Get them back in your mind. Fall in love with them. Plant them in your heart. What did Solomon say? As a person thinketh in their heart. You've got to get emotionally involved with this. How does a guy like me, no formal education, no business experience, earn millions of dollars, build a business that operates all over the world? I do it because I don't let logic stop me. I'm not afraid of losing. Now think, what do you really want? Go lay under a tree somewhere. Don't even talk to anybody. Let your mind wander. Let it take off. Go to the land of imagination. Think about it. Let your mind wander. Go right through the terror barrier that we call logic. I'm going to teach you something about the terror barrier later, but I want you to stop and think of what you want. I had the very good fortune of working with Sir Edmund Hillary. Now, you might not even know who he is, although he hasn't been gone very long. He is the guy that was the first person to stand on top of the world. He was the very first man to stand on the top of Mount Everest along with Tenzing Norgay, his Sherpa guide. Do you know the beautiful thing about them, this little side deal? Neither one of them would say who got there first. Tenzing Norgay didn't say. Edmund Hillary didn't say. But they were the first, Hillary and his Sherpa guide. Now, Ed Hillary was a beekeeper from New Zealand. He was a beekeeper down in Auckland, New Zealand. Where did he get the idea that he could do something that has never been done before? People died. There's people encased in ice up there. They're never coming down. They tried to do this. They had been trying to do this for centuries. Just like the Wright brothers, there are people trying to fly for centuries. But you know the strange thing about it? Ed Hillary went up there in 1951. He failed. He went back in 52. He failed. Now, there's people around him saying, you've got to be out of your mind going back there. You're going to kill yourself. But in 1953, he stood on top of the world. Now, I had the pleasure of working with him on a couple of occasions, and the only difference in Ed Hillary and myself that I could see was his, his, in his size. He was a big man. You say, but I'm not like Hillary, and I'm not like the Wright brothers. You're exactly like them. You're exactly like them. There's a spiritual power within you that's perfect. Your spiritual DNA is perfect, and it's forever seeking expression with and through you. That's why you want things. Don't throw your wants. Don't leave your wants on the table. For goodness sake, take a run at it. Go sit down at that table. Get a pad and a pen out and start thinking, what do I really want? I want to be financially independent. That's something all thinking people want. I'm going to tell you something. When you have no money problems, you'll be amazed how much free time you have. You see, in this program, we talk about wants. We're not talking about what we think we can do, and we're not talking about what we've done in the past. We're talking about where we're going, what we're going to do. What do you want? I guarantee you, if you can describe it, if you can see it in your head, you can hold it in your hand. That's exactly the way it works. Napoleon Hill, my mentor, he said, anything the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. Now, you may not believe you can. I guarantee you, you stick with us and you keep studying what I'm sharing with you and you'll change your beliefs. See, I found out that was one of the keys in my success. I changed my belief. See, our belief system is based upon our evaluation of something. And frequently, if we reevaluate a situation, our belief about that situation will change. There's a three-step process for goals, goal setting and achieving. It's fantasy, theory, fact. You've got to build the fantasy. And it's okay to say that it's just a fantasy. That's where everything starts. That's where your clothes started. You probably have synthetic fibers on. We didn't always know how to do that. The building you're in, the air conditioning, the heating system, your, your cell phone, your computer, the fact that I can shoot this here and you can sit there and watch it. We weren't always able to do this. Somebody fantasized. 
and then they turned their fantasy into a theory. See, they went from using their imagination, and they began to use their reasoning factor, and they started to add thoughts to it, and they started to bring it together, and they started to give it some serious thought. It's like Hillary said, I bet I can get to the top of that mountain. Everybody's saying they're crazy, but they didn't know what he could see. He could see what they couldn't see. The Wright brothers, one was saying to the other, I see it, brother, I see it, I see it's up there. And when they get up, they were only up for 14 seconds. And somebody said, yeah, but their first flight was only 14 seconds. And they said, we not only got up there, but we stayed up there for 14 seconds. See the difference in perception, in attitude? Don't listen to anybody else. The only person you want to listen to is somebody that's accomplished more than yourself and know that they're no better than you. Listen to them. Do what they tell you. I know how to win. If you can build the fantasy and you can turn it into theory, I guarantee you it'll turn into a fact. You hold the idea in your mind and it must manifest in form. That is an absolute law. The wealthiest man in the world in 1908 really started this movement that we are talking about today. Andrew Carnegie told Napoleon Hill, he said, any idea that is held in the mind, that's emphasized, that you fall in love with, that's either feared or revered, will begin at once to clothe itself in the most convenient and appropriate form available. Now, I want to share something that a lady come up on an airplane and give to me. She said, your materials really help me. I want to give you something that's helped me and it'll probably help you. It's a wonderful quote and no one get credit for it. Said, blessed are the humans who look for unseen things that are intuitive, but not yet accepted into the reality of life. The intuitive is the feeling part of you, the part that can see something nobody else can see. You see it in your mind. It's never been accepted into the reality of life by you or any of your friends or relatives or loved ones. But you can see it. You wouldn't be able to see it if you couldn't get it. Blessed are the humans who look for unseen things that are intuitive but not yet accepted into the reality of life. Now listen to what he says. They will be rewarded with knowledge and wisdom and will become the forerunners of the newest sciences on the planet. Do you know something? There has been over a thousand people go up Mount Everest since Ed Hillary did. I get on a plane now to fly to the other side of the world and I go to bed. That's right, I go to bed. They've even got a bed, and they give me a duvet to cover myself. And they ask me if I'd like breakfast when I wake up. God bless the Wright brothers. God bless Ed Hillary. They're no different than you or me. Don't let the fact that you don't know how to do it set the goal. In fact, if you know how to, if you know how to do it, it's probably no good. It's got to scare and excite you at the same time. Now, I want you to go and sit down at that table and you pick up those dreams that you've left sitting there for a while. And you say, no more. I'm alive, I'm awake, and I'm on the move, baby. There may be no one that understands, but I understand. And you write out your goal in the present tense. I am so happy and grateful now that and describe it. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to share something with you that most people never know. I'm going to teach you about the terror barrier. And when you get that, along with the paradigms in this one, I'm going to tell you, baby, you got results that stick. Don't let it slip through your fingers. Don't leave it on the table. Claim it. It's yours. This is Bob Proctor. Thank you. Thank you.